So you've made it to the fourth video in our binomial distribution series. I strongly recommend that my students who have these worksheets in front of them, please try to do them yourselves before filling them out. This would be really good practice to see if you're ready to do the homework assignments that I've assigned, and also to see if you understood what the concepts were in the previous videos. So this is gonna tackle doing all of the targeted binomial probability distribution functions. We're also gonna do cumulative distribution functions, and we're also going to do some averages and standard deviations, covering everything that we've done in videos one through three. All right, here we go. Hopefully you've given this a try, and uh, we'll do just fine as I go through the answers here. Suppose you have a 40% chance that someone is gonna match your political affiliation. So what would be your P and your Q? So the P would be your success, which is having someone match your political affiliation. So the P would be 0.4, or 0.40 if you're being stylistic. Um, the Q would then be the complement of P, which would be 0.6 or 0.60. Again, just showing you with those extra zeros on the end. Sorry, middle school teachers, I know you told us not to do this, but if you added the two decimals together, you get 100% or one. So let's look at the notation. The notation that our x is going to belong to the binomial distribution with some target trial group n and the success rate is 0.40. So this notation is going to follow us th through the rest of the semester as we deal with other kinds of uh, distributions such as continuous distributions, normal distributions, chi-square distributions, and others. So here we go. You meet 20 people. What is the probability that exactly 10 people match your political affiliation? So this is a targeted exactly 10. So n is going to be here. This is going to be x equal to 10 right here. And that is going to set up our equation, which our probability is of x is equal to 10 in the binomial, which is our 20-person trial group, and 0.40 for our success rate. So according to the calculator steps I taught you in the first, um, actually in videos two and three, this would be the binomial probability distribution function, which gives us 20 comma 0.40 or just 0.4 comma 10. And let's turn on our calculator and type it in. So I've got my calculator in uh, normal mode, not math print mode classic mode technically. Uh, second vars, um, or second, yeah, just hit the second key, then this vars key right by the down arrow. Push the up arrow key, go to binom PDF, and we're gonna go with 20 trials. Our P value is 0.4 or 0.40. Our X value is 10. And then we paste that in. Older calculators, use your parentheses and commas above your seven, eight, and nine key. And that gives us an answer of point one one oh let's see did i do the right yep point one one seven or eleven point seven percent okay i get to write this down now so here we go this is going to be equal to point one one seven or 11.7% chance of that happening. Now that's exactly 10. That's exactly 10. So you might think to yourself, oh, that's not very good. But a lot of times we're not looking for the exact amount. Let's say you meet 20 people. What is the probability that seven or less match your affiliation? So here's our N. Now seven or less is a way of saying X is less than or equal to seven because it's it wants seven it's seven or less now what's great about that the way i worded the problem is this is exactly the way that you want to type this in because this less than or equal to is what the binom cdf the binomial cumulative distributive distributive function works so here we have our probability of x is less than or equal to seven which is part of our binomial distribution of 20 comma 0.40.
Now, some of you are going like, hey, I did this problem, but I didn't write out all this notation. That's fine. You're, you feel like more of a statistician if you do. But let's just kind of get to what you probably focused on, which was getting the answer, which, I mean, you know, if you're going being an economist about it, let's just get to the thing, right? CDF, which is 20, comma, point 40, comma. And in this case, we don't want exactly 10. We want 7. And we want seven here. And the reason why we want seven is because we want seven or less. So what the calculator is gonna do, this is so great. The calculator is gonna go a binomial CD PDF of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. It's gonna do all of those for us. So holy smokes, does that save a lot of time. So here we go, getting our calculator here. Um, let's go second vars and let's go to the um, CDF. Nope, that's the wrong one. That's Poisson. This is binomial. Binomial CDF. And then the trials is 20. The P is 0.40 or 0.4. And the X value is 7 because that's going to give us 7 that match, 6 that match, 5 that match, 4 that match, 3 that match, 2 that match, 1 that match, and 0 that matches. Whoa, people sometimes miss 0. And that gives us a much higher chance of this happening. Look at that. This is almost a 42% chance of it happening, 0.416. So I get to write that down, 0 0.416, 0 0.416, or 41.6%. Yeah, that gives us that binomial probability cumulatively from 7 through 0. So that means that um, there's a... There's a 41.6% chance that seven or fewer people in that group of 20 agree with you on your political affiliation. So that's pretty likely. All right, not as likely as 50%, but it's pretty good. Now, check out this one here. This is one we're going to need to like kind of figure this out. So at the end of video three, this is the puzzle, right? Because this is saying, suppose you meet 20 people. What is the probability that more than five match your political affiliation. Okay, now, the calculator doesn't do greater than. So what we have to think about is like, okay, what does it mean to be more than five? Okay, so more than five. So so more than five would be x um, greater than five. Okay, so we're gonna write that down as a little scrap work here. Because what we want is we wanna think about the complement of that. Because if we do the probability of x greater than five, in our distribution of the binomial distribution 20.4, we want to find the complement of this. So what would be equivalent to this? One minus, okay. So we want the opposite of greater than or equal, greater than five. Mm hmm. Well, one way we can write it is we can say that this is the probability of x is less than or equal to five. Because that, if like, the numbers that are greater than 5 are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the opposite of 5 through 20, I'm sorry, I didn't say 5. I meant 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the opposite of numbers that are 6 through 20 are the numbers 0 through 5. And so that covers it. So this is my hook. This is going to give me what I need. And that is going to be then 1 minus the binom CDF, or the binomial cumulative distributive function, of 20, comma, 0.40, comma, 5. So check it out. These two are complements of each other because there's no overlap. They're mutually exclusive. And therefore, by subtracting this value, I will get the greater than value. So this is gonna be one minus, and hey, you know what I'm gonna do? Turn on my calculator, figure it out. So you'll notice that I have my binom CDF here, so all I need to do is just change the seven to a five, so I'm gonna hit second enter, and kind of back up my cursor to the seven and overstrike that with a five, and that gives me 0 0.126, 0 0.126. Two, six. Okay, so we got 0.126. So uh, 1 minus 0.126 
again go back here and I can just whoops didn't mean to scroll up there I can go one minus I can go second answer uh, just to drag that decimal in but I'll just type in 0.126 so I've done my rounding already blam 0.874 I get to write that down 0.874 0.874. That means 87.4% chance that that more than five, that means six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 people will match your political affiliation. So you're going to please the crowd, but you still have a good chance of making people upset. So let's now talk about the average and the standard deviation that will match your affiliation. So if you remember back to the beginning of this video, we had a pretty quick and simple formula for average here because we are going to take n times p, and this will give us our theoretical average here. So the n in this case is the number of people in the group, or the number of people in that trial, which is 20. And then your p is a chance of matching your political affiliation, and point 40 times 20 is going to be eight and this would be exactly eight people will agree with you on average this is the again theoretical average of asking 20 people um, if they agree with you now to find the standard deviation we have to take the square root of n times p times q so let's first of all just work with the numbers n is the people in that trial uh, p is going to be our success rate and then Q is going to be the failure rate. Now, remember that Q, which is not the success rate, since this is a binomial distribution, is just the complement of P. So 40% from 100% is 60%. And if we multiply all these together, we get 4.8. But that's not all, because what we have to do is make sure we square root this. And if we square root this, this gives us approximately 2.2, which we can round to 2. So this tells us that we're going to have 8 people give or take 2 people, normally, who will agree with us on our political affiliation, if the 40% success rate is true. That's what standard deviation does. Standard deviation tells us the give or take from an average. And it also tells us how good the average is. If this was a much wider range, so let's say I went from 8 to 4 or 8 to 12, that would be a much wider range, which means this average wouldn't be as good. But since the average only has a range of 2 in each direction, or 4 total, um, this is a pretty good average. So I think you can kind of bank on this. And again, sociologists and psychologists might uh, argue with this because, well, people pretty much travel in groups and uh, cohorts, so it's more likely that you're going to find people with similar characteristics together um, in social settings. But from a pure statistical standpoint, if you were doing this randomly, th this holds up. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I appreciate your time.